Hi, everyone. Welcome to April's My Sonet Software Facebook Live. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to give everyone just a minute or so to get uh, settled and get in. I know whenever I'm joining a Facebook Live, it always takes me just a couple seconds to find that uh, posting. So I'll give everyone just a moment. All right, if you've joined us, welcome. You see, we have a few viewers. I know many of you are probably looking for the right button to find our post, but I wanna welcome you to the MySonet live for the month of April. And today's topic is the Modify tab and Stitch Editor. So let me just, See, we're up to 22 viewers. Welcome, everyone. If you'd like to share where you're from, please put that in our chat. During today's live, we welcome questions. Uh, in the background, I have our wonderful support team of Meredith and Amy. I'm not sure if Ryan's with us today or not, but um, without this this trio of people uh, would be very challenging to do Facebook Live. So all of the educators truly appreciate um, the hard work that they do in the background. So they will be monitoring the questions and forwarding questions on to me throughout the live today. If there's a question that we don't have an immediate answer for, we do come back over the next several days and post answers for you. Um, sometimes you might try to stump us and, and we have to do a little research. So, all right, I think we'll go ahead and actually get started with today's topic. And that, again, is the Modify tab and Stitch Editor in MySonet software. I'm going to get myself a new screen here. Let's uh, clear that little message. I'm going to go to New Window. And I'm going to start with a fresh screen and choose blank canvas just to get started here. And I am going to choose, um, I'll go ahead and use this larger hoop that I had previously used. And I want to bring a design in. I want to show you some of the things that you can do in the silver level of our software. So you're probably already aware that MySonet software is available in three levels, silver, gold, and platinum. And as each level builds, you get more uh, tools and more tricks and more um, programs that you can do more with. So I'm for ease of use today, I'm just going to bring in a super design. Let me bring in something that is a little bit directional, just something simple. I'll bring in this bouquet of roses here. I think this will illustrate what I want to pretty easily. So in the silver level, and that's the level I'm working on right now, we can do a few basic things to quote, modify a design. To me, modifying a design means that we change it in some way. So in silver, the things we can do would be to mirror image. As a reminder here on my design is selected, I have green boxes around it. Green boxes means that I can still change it. It is a super design. And I know we've covered this in other lives before. If it was just a regular design I brought in, it would be fixed as stitches already. And so I changed that to the white, the white boxes. That means my stitches are locked and I'm not going to be um, changing that super design any longer. But what I can do to modify this design, you can do this with every design in silver, is use the mirror image or the flip um, arrows that are on the side. So right now that upper leaf is pointing to the left. If I flip it this direction on the side arrow, then that leaf is pointing to the right. If I use the flip tool at the top, it turns it upside down, okay? 
And each of those switches works basically like a toggle, on or off. Just have the design selected when you want to make that change. We can also rotate an embroidery design in our silver level. We have two different ways we can do that. We can rotate it 45 degrees at a time by going up to the toolbar and clicking. Every time you click, you get another 45 degrees, okay? But we also have the option to do free rotate and you will find the free rotate on the right hand side of the box. It's a circle. When I hover my mouse over it, it becomes a loop arrow, loopy arrow. And then I'm just, I'm clicking and dragging that um, tool to, to cause my free rotate to happen however I want it to be. Of course, I can change colors. That goes without saying. You can change your colors. If I don't want this um, shade of green, I want something darker, I can just change that green. Okay, but that's pretty minor. So we also have the ability to resize, and some people might want to consider that resize is a way to modify a design. I certainly do. With a design selected, I click on the resize and my box is turned to blue from white. This means that my stitch count can change. So just as a note here, my stitch count is 40,635 stitches. If I just stretch out my design and it's going to recalculate, I am now at 54,567 stitches. The same thing would happen if I um, move my boxes in and you don't have to be proportional. You can change it to get a totally different look. And now I'm down to 35,677 stitches. So those are things that we can do um, that would be modifying the design in the silver level. Okay. Now, let me turn off my resize tool. Again, it's like a toggle on off. My boxes have returned to white. I do think sometimes there's a bit of confusion because on the tab, on the home ribbon rather, we have something called modify design. And really what that does is it just really scales the design unless you've turned resize on. And it will let you um, change the numbers either percentage wise and keep it proportional or uncheck it for to not be proportional and you can do a rotation in here so there is that button here for modified design but that's not real powerful i'm going to show you what else you can do in modify that makes it um so much more powerful. And it looks like we have a question. Um, question is, how did you change the color? So on your color palette, and you're working with a Mac, and uh, my apologies, I'm working on a Windows computer. So um, in the Mac, you're going to find your color palette. In my case, it's over here on the right in the design palette. And I can double click any color that I'd like. And it brings up my color selection window and I'll change this one to a purple. I pick a new color in my quick colors and that will bring me into like that color range down here. If I know what thread color I want to use, I could also type it in the fine thread box and you will have something very similar to this on your Mac. It just will be in a different place. Okay. So I changed that one shade to um, a very light pink. Alrighty, so that, those are a few things that you can do to modify a design within the silver level. So now let's take a look at what we could do um, if we go up to the gold level of software. So let me, um, let me just close this window. Well, I'll get rid of my design, we'll do that. And I'm gonna check my hoop size, 260 by 360, because I have a big design I wanna bring in to show you. I'm going to choose to insert my design rather than open my design because insert will bring in a copy of the design and I won't overwrite my file. 
So put a couple designs here in a folder for ease of use today. Now this design uh, is called Artistic Floral or Artistic Flowers, one of the two. It is a free design that you can get on mysonet.com. Uh, if you go into our embroidery designs and search for Artistic Floral, you should find this design. It is free. Once you put it in your cart, you will have to go through the checkout process to download the design, but it is totally free. You won't need to pay anything for it. And it's a great design to show you some of the tools in our modify tab. So now we're, we're moving into what you can do in the gold level. When you have the gold level of the software, we add on this modify tab. It becomes active for you. So I want to have the design selected before I click modify. Let me show you what happens if you click modify without anything selected. You get a little reminder message that says a design must be selected to use this, the features of the modify tab. So sometimes I think it's best to know what, what the error messages can be when you're learning makes it a little bit easier. So have the design selected. I can select it either on the film strip or by clicking on the work area of the screen. And now I'll click on modify. So modify opens up another ribbon here. That's what we call these in the Windows version in ribbon. Um, in your Mac, I know that the modify option is, is to the right. Um, there's a whole panel of different um, icons and tools. So I do know it's over on the right. And here we have all the tools we can use in gold for modifying a design. Now we haven't lost anything I've already shown you. Remember that our levels, silver, gold, and platinum build on. So if you purchase gold, everything that you had in silver will come over from gold. So you just, you're adding on each level. Okay. Now, within the Modify tab, we have um, tools such as copy and paste and cut and duplicate and delete. Um, we have selection tools, and we're going to come back and spend some time on the selection tools. We do have a resize right here, and um, resize works the same way as it did on the silver side. It's just they put an icon here to make it convenient for you right on the Modify tab. We have our Draw Stitches tools. Again, we'll come back and spend some time in here. We have Get Length. That's a cool measuring tool um, to measure how big something is. And then we have some insert uh, commands. We can insert a color command, a stop command, and stitches. And then our modify block, uh, this is a quick way to modify the block um, using a percentage and to do a rotation as well. So this tool is the same as it was in the silver on the home ribbon. All right, so let's, let me first explore the get length tool. I love this handy dandy tool. Sometimes I use it just because it's there and not really to change anything. But let's say I wanted to know the diameter of this orange flower here. I'm going to zoom up for you. And by the way, if you're not familiar with the zoom tools, take a few minutes to get to know them. In the bottom right hand corner on the green um, bar, you'll see a magnifier lens, which is our zoom to rectangle tool. And when you select it, your mouse pointer becomes a magnifying glass. And you can left click and drag to zoom higher into something. All right. Now, if you want to go back to see the whole design, the tool immediately to the right is zoom to fit. Those are my two favorite tools that I use because I typically want to zoom around a particular um, part of a design because I want to see it better. However, as, as with many things in our MySonet software, we have more than one way to do things. And I, I do like that because people have different um, ways they like to work. To the right of Zoom to Fit, we have a percentage zoom tool we can click on. And it has some preset zooms 
that we can use. So I can choose one of those. I've chosen like 800%, which is so big, I can't even tell where I'm at in my design. There we go. That's 75%. But if I don't really know a number and I really like a visual, then I'm going to use the little slider here. It's right above my clock on my um, toolbar here. So I can either click on the minus or the plus, or I can zoom. I'm getting my hover tool name to come up all the time. Or I can click right on the bar and zoom in and out. So if you like numbers, you can use the drop down with the percentage numbers. If you're more of a visual person, you can use the zoom slide bar. I'm going to go back here to zoom to fit. I always like to see my whole design um, before I get started. So let's, again, I'm going to, sorry about that little sidebar lesson on the zoom tools, but um, so many times when I'm teaching classes, I do, um, I use those tools without thinking too much. And I realize not everyone um, is comfortable with how they work. So I have just used zoom to rectangle and drawn a box around my orange flower so that I can show you how to measure the diameter of this flower. Because perhaps I want to see if this will fit in an area I want to use. To turn on my get length tool, I simply click. And you can see that that tool has the turquoise or greenish color behind it. Depending on your screen color, you might see it as more blue than green. But now my cursor has a ruler attached to it. And to use the measuring tool, I can, I can measure top to bottom, left to right, whatever I'd like to measure. Once I measure from the outside of this little flourish to the outside of another flourish right here. And you can see in my mouse, I know it's small, but it gives me both my metric and my imperial number. So this distance from flourish to flourish is 62.9 or 62.3, depending on where I move my mouse, millimeters across, which is 2.48 inches. And my tool will stay the same. It'll stay connected until I turn it off. So I know that flower is about two and a half inches. However, that's a little big for my project. So maybe I want to measure this inner part of this flower. So the inner part of this flower measures 35.8 millimeters or 1.4 inches. And that's just under an inch and a half. And that might be better suited um, to my project I have in mind. So the get length tool, um, fun, easy way. And I'm just going to right click to turn that tool off. All right. So now that we have zoomed up on this flower and I've measured it, and I think I might want to use it in another project, I've got to take it out of this, this um, large design and bring it out on its own. So let me come back. Let's let me do one thing for you. Uh, let me use one of my selection tools. I'm going to select all visible and I'm going to copy this design. And I've just put it on the clipboard for you so you can see um, the design over here. Might be easier if you can reference where I'm at within the whole design. Okay, now selection tools. Let's talk about selection tools. They're in this grouping. There are six of them. And we can, we can use different tools for different situations. Some of the tools may be similar to what you've used in a, um, a program. If you do any sort of artwork or clip, clip artwork, um, any sort of editing type of things with photos or pictures, some of them may be similar, okay? They're very easy to use once you know how to use them. I think the, the most basic one is the select all visible. And let me, let me zoom out for you and just illustrate that tool for you again. Select all visible will find every stitch on the screen that's in the modify tab and put a box around it. So couldn't be really easier than that. That's if I want to 
choose the whole design. And that's how I made the copy. All right. I select it all and I made a copy and that put that copy on my clipboard. Now I don't want select all visible. We're going to learn how to use some of the other tools. Once again, I'm going to scroll. I'm going to zoom up rather onto this area with my orange flower. Get it a little better centered for you. There you go. And I can choose to use the box select. I think there's enough space around it. We'll see to choose box select. Box select is, you, is done by just left clicking and dragging a rectangle around the object that you want to capture. So turn the tool on, it turns turquoise and my mouse now has a, a little box select icon around it. So I'm gonna capture this and I can just get, I can just get it, I believe. There we go. So when I let go, the the boundaries of the box will close into the stitches that I've I've encased. I was concerned about getting a little bit of this green um, vine here, but I was able to just select that orange flower. Once it's selected, I can choose something. I can do something with it. At this point, I can copy it and I could paste it back in. I could cut it out. I could duplicate it or I could totally delete it. Choice is mine, um, whatever I'd like to do. If I copy it, it will place a copy on the clipboard. And then if I copy and I want it back in to this design, I'd have to paste it back in. Cutting it will simply totally remove it from this design. So it's now missing. However, it did end up on my clipboard so if I want it back in that exact same position, I could do that as well. I could paste it back in. So cut will take it out, but you can bring it back in with paste because it placed that item on the clipboard. Or if I simply want to copy it and paste, it will place the paste to copy right directly on top of the original. So you will have to click and drag it away so you can see that you do indeed have two copies of that flower. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is I'm, I'm going to um, copy this and I'm going to take it into a new window, go to a blank canvas. Whoops. Let's cancel that. I was a little too mouse happy about that. Have a little patience while the software reopens and I will go ahead and let this go into this large hoop and I'll paste my flower over. So you see that that clipboard carries over from window to window. Okay. Just going to put this here for safekeeping for right now. We will come back to that in just a moment and I'm going to come back to my full design screen and let me check for some questions. Uh, the name of the design, it is artistic floral, I do believe, let me, artistic floral is the name of it. And you can find it in um, my Sonet library. It is a free design. So it's a 260 by two, I'm sorry, it's a 360 by 260 design. So it's one of our large designs. It's a fun design to play with. Okay, I'm gonna clear off my second orange flower. It's still selected so I can easily just touch the delete on my ribbon or I can use the delete on my keyboard. Either one will work to delete that out. And I want to move on and show you some of our other selection tools. So next up we have um, freehand select and we have point select. They work similar for the longest time I had a, I was really challenged with freehand select and I was very grateful when we came out with point select because for me, point select was a little more manageable. But let me demonstrate what freehand select will do. You kind of have to have a steady hand. So some of you, it may not be a problem, but for me, it was a little bit of a learning curve and we've had this um, for a long time. So I've, I've practiced my learning curve. 
let's say that I want to select um, this tulip here, just, just this tulip, and I'm going to try to get some of the stem in. So the process of using free freehand select, it's a left click, and you continue to hold down your left mouse button while with your right hand, you are um, you're zooming around the design you want to get. I think I got a little extra green there. And just like box select, it finds the stitches um, that it's closest to. And I'm going to copy that one and we'll put it in my clipboard. And I did get a little bit of green. I'm going to paste, paste this back in so you can see what it looks like. There we go. So I did get a little bit extra of the green. It would be fairly easy to clean that up using another one of our tools. But this is why I really like point select so much um, because it's a little bit more precise when you're working with a narrow area. So let me, let me zoom up just a bit more. There we go. And I'm going to choose point select. Now, instead of the lasso, we have a, a lasso with little um, points on it. And when I left click, all I have to do is do a left click and it drops a little yellow circle. I'm going to continue to drop points. I'm going to come down here and get this tail bit of the stem. And you can see that I can come right in between the space between my design. And I can be much more accurate with where I'm going. Once I've connected all the way around, you need three points to connect. You can use as many or as few as you need to make it work. My theory is the more points, the better. Um, when you're ready to select that, you do a right click. And again, we are now uh, selected our stitches that were within our point select tool. And I can actually lift this out and away from the design. I don't have to copy it. You can see it will still stay connected to that stitch here, but you can see I didn't get any of the green stitch that I inadvertently picked up over here using the um, freehand select tool. So that's the basic difference between those two tools. The freehand um, to me, it takes a little steadier hand, a little more precision. And the point select is, it works the same way, but on a left click and drop the yellow dot process. Let's see, question. I am using, um, the question is, what version of the MySonet software am I in? And I am in the, I'm using the tools in the gold level of software. So the modify tab is in the gold level of software. And another question is, if you get a design from my Sonet, are you allowed to modify that design? So you can modify designs from my Sonet. However, um, anything that is copyrighted, like we have our um, Cruella designs from Disney, those designs you cannot modify um, because they are um, set to be the way they are. But our other designs, when you make those purchases, or in this case, this free design, you are um, indeed able to modify that design for your use. Okay. All right. Let's let me find out where we're at here. Let's go back to Zoom to Fit. So we have tulips hanging out of the screen. <laughs> All righty. Um, let me uh, illustrate selecting stitches for you real quick. And I think I will do that with our wayward tulip. So I'm going to zoom over here. And along this line here, we can see we have some stitches. When I turn on the select stitches tool, again, look to see if it's turned on so that um, you, you know what tool you're using. When you click on a stitch or a line, you'll get a box on it. And then once that is, once you have a stitch selected, then you can move that stitch. So I'm just going to drag that stitch down to see where it's going. Um, and I can do that stitch by stitch. With a stitch selected, I can come back up and delete that stitch on my using my trash can, 
or I can delete it using the delete on my keyboard. And so this would be um, somewhat of a slow way to remove single stitches, but there are times where you may want to um, remove a one stitch at a time, okay? Or you may need to move that stitch. Let's come down to the very bottom here of my stem and select a stitch. And perhaps I want to move this stitch over. Let me find another stitch along this line. May have deleted a few too many of them. Here we go. And I can bring this stitch over to uh, add to my stem. Okay. Once in a while, you might find a design out there that um, needs a little fill in or just needs a stitch moved. So it's, um, sorry guys, I'm zoomed up way too much. Let me come back over so you can see this better. Here we go. So I'm gonna zoom and left click on my select stitches and move that tool over. Now this one has is a jump stitch. It's a dotted line, so I know that. And uh, let's come down a little bit here in my zoom and see if I can grab the end of that jump stitch and move that jump stitch down here too, because we don't need to jump that far out. It's not going anywhere. There we go. So now I've brought those stray stitches in and finished off my stem. All right, so um, select stitches will allow you to move a stitch. Um, you can delete a stitch. Um, you can copy a stitch. Um, lots of different ways you might wanna use that. Here being so zoomed up, we see that this single stitch is, is sticking way out. Perhaps we want that to be further in and we can just move it in like that. So a lot of flexibility for finite tweaking of a design using select stitches. Alrighty, so um, that's an overview on how we use our selection tools. And just because I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our other tulip over here, just real quickly, it's okay if I get a little bit of extra here. So I wanna show you one more thing on the modify tab um, as far as drawing stitches. So let me check for questions before I move on. So question is, even though it is a jump stitch, by dragging it to the zigzag area, does that make it a stitch now? So that last jump stitch that was quite long, it was well over an inch long, I essentially shortened that jump stitch to the same length as that last satin stitch was. So it'll just read as a stitch now. Um, it won't like prompt me to trim it or anything because it's just gonna line up with my satin stitch. So, and it's the end of the design. So it's not like I would be going someplace else because that was on my tulip I had separated, okay? All right, so I wanna show you um, the, what the draw all stitches is about, because this is more basic in the modify tab that you have in gold. When we move into platinum here shortly, um, I think you'll understand the difference between um, the draw the draw tools in modify in gold versus the draw tools in platinum. So in gold, I have a two slider bars, a minus to a plus, minus to a plus. And I, I like to think of this as my stitch advance or my step through on my machine. So if I'm embroidering a design and I want to jump ahead to a color or jump through some stitches, I'm going to push that stitch plus button until I get to the stitch I want to get to. Well, that's how this works as well. So I'm doing a left click and slide. And you can see where my design starts. And as I am moving forward, parts of my design are like disappearing from screen. Okay. Now they really haven't gone anywhere yet. 
if I click on the draw all stitches, they will all come back. I'm just looking to see where things are and what order they stitch in. Now, we can also, this is a good design to illustrate this, we can also use color select on our design panel. So when I uncheck a color in the design panel, you can see that different colors are being hidden from view. All right, so this is another way that you could do selection is you could select by color. So I have left colors five, six, seven, eight, and nine selected. And here are the stitches that are left visible. I've essentially protected all the other stitches because I've hidden them from view. Sometimes I use this tool to to separate things out to make it easier for any overlap. Like perhaps I want to get to just saving um, these green leaves. So in this case, I'll continue on and hide this pink and purple. And now I'm left with um, my green leaves. And then I have a second secondary color of green for these little um, tendrils that come out. From here, easiest thing to do is to select all visible because it's only seeing what you can see on screen. Everything else is protected. If I want to copy that, put it on my clipboard and I'm like, well, let's just delete it. I don't need it. I'll go ahead and delete it. And when I delete my, the rest of my design that I had hidden from view comes back. Does that make sense? So you can hide the things that you want to keep to make it easy to remove things, or you can do what I just did. And I hit everything to find what I did want. And then I placed it on my clipboard. And then I have that clipboard to use in a new window. So if I open another new window, I love the fact that you can have multiple windows open at a time because I have a lot of them and I'm getting an error message. Um, okay. Well, my phone is not connected to my computer, so I don't know why I got that message, but whatever. <laughs> and I have my new blank canvas. I'm going to go ahead and click on paste. And that brings it from my clipboard onto my screen. So the um, clipboard will only hold one item at a time. So before I intentionally put something on my clipboard, I make sure um, that I have already um, done something with what was on the clipboard in the past so that I have it. And I, I do believe I have that. Uh, yeah, I have that pink flower on another screen here. So I still have my pink or my orange flower on another screen. All right. So this is another um, fun, easy way to manipulate designs. And I can use these leaves. Um, with other flowers. I can resize them. I could recolor them. I could do anything I want with them. All right. So that is um, how the modify um, slide bars work. And you can work from the end or the beginning. Um, with this one, I only have a few stitches left on here. So I can slide from the end and isolate stitches even more. To make it easier, let's say I want to crop out this one leaf and um, add it in. So let's do that real quick. There's just, there's really no limit other than your imagination on what you can do with modify and stitch editor. So I'm going to copy that leaf and then I'm going to bring that leaf down and I'm going to see if I can rotate it. And then I'm going to draw all stitches. Well, that didn't end up exactly where I wanted it to be. So we can play around with it on screen since it's still selected. And rotate it just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So you can see that you can just create all kinds of new embroideries from existing embroideries. Alrighty. So let's move on now to, um, I'm not going to need to save these changes. I have plenty of these 
that I can use again. Let's move on to what we can do with our platinum level of software in the Stitch Editor program. I don't think I want to save that one. And let me see. I have lots of things I can show you. Let's start with this design. So this design I actually got out of the sample folder for the MySonet samples. It is called, hmm, since I brought it in as insert, it comes in untitled, but I do believe the name of it is like yellow, yellow daisies is the name of the design. That's this one right here. And I found that in my sample folder. When you install your MySonet software, initially your sample files don't install automatically. You will need to go to mysonet.com, which I'm showing you here, and go to the My Dashboard section. Make sure you're signed in. And then the Download and Update section is where you want to go. And this is where you'd find any updates um, to your software, either Windows or Mac. If it's a Mac, you want to tap on the Mac side and do these downloads. If it's Windows, you're going to stay on this Windows side. And here we have um, our sample files, our optional downloads. So you would click on that download sample file, and I'm going to get another copy of the sample file, apparently. <laughs> it's a very quick download. Um, it's a zip file, so you will need to unzip that file. And then I placed it just in my Sonet folder. In um, I used um, the File Explorer to place that sample file so it was easy to get to. So in case you don't have any sample files, they're there. You just have to go get them um, from the website, mysonet.com. Again, go to dashboard and then go to downloads and updates and you'll find them on that page. So our yellow flowers here, kind of pretty. I'm, it's, it's very warm here. I'm in Ohio and we're finally getting spring weather. So my daffodils are in bloom and my tulips are getting ready to bloom. So I'm very excited about flowers. So we're going to do some fun things with these flowers today using Stitch Editor. So we've had a number of different variants of Stitch Editor software. And at one time, Stitch Editor was called Modify. And it was the program that is that we know today as Stitch Editor. It's been called Stitch Editor. It's been called Modify. It's been called Stitch Editor again. So um, we actually want to get into Stitch Editor program. And from I'm working in Platinum now. And from the Platinum level on my home tab, I have a little icon called Edit Design. And this is one way to get into Stitch Editor. Another way to get into Stitch Editor would be to right click on the design and from the pop up, choose edit in Stitch Editor. It gets you to the same place, doesn't matter which one you choose. So I'm just going to click on the pop up. Now we get this little window at the top where it says opening Stitch Editor. Don't ever close that because if you do, you just have closed your Stitch Editor window without really getting it open. At the top, you can tell that you're in Stitch Editor because it says across the top. And um, we now have new ribbons uh, and new tabs within the Stitch Editor program. So that's uh, something to remember is that you're now in a separate program, but we are directly linked back to our original MySonet page we started on, okay? So the tabs inside of Stitch Editor are Home, Modify, Border, Applique, Emboss, Object View, and Help. Now there's just no way I can share everything with you that you can do in the full Stitch Editor program today, but I'm going to try to show you um, a few easy things. First off, everything you learned in gold was not a um, waste of time because you have those same selection tools right here. You also have your resize tool here. You have some additional um, tools on the home tab that you didn't have before. 
this um, design select area will show you any, if you have more than one design that you've brought in to Stitch Editor, it will show the additional designs here. So you can work on multiple designs on the same screen at one time. And then we have a change hoop and we have a life view and design player. Okay. At the bottom, what's missing up here between platinum and gold is our um, slide bars for our stitches. We have a wonderful enhanced slide bar system down here with colors. And so I can very quickly and easily isolate color by color just by clicking on my draw next color. All right. So let me do draw all colors again. And I want to work on these leaves, these like pale yellow. What color is that? That is a light avocado is what it says. So I want to isolate those. And but drawing by color is the quickest and easiest way to do so. I can ghost mode the rest of my design so I know where those leaves are in relationship to the other um, components of my design. I, I like using ghost mode. Sometimes it gets in my way, so I might turn it on and off. Again, it's a toggle switch. And from here, I can select all visible. And I can then um, choose to make different changes to it. So this is a fill pattern that's pretty flat. I'm going to zoom up on just a section of it so you can see it's pretty basic and, and pretty, it's pretty blah, honestly. We have an embossing tool in our um, platinum my sonnet, sorry, got a little grumble there from one of my pups. And our embossing tool is, is much like a, a rubber stamp. And we can stamp an object on top of a fill pattern to create a new, essentially a new fill pattern. So I want to go to the plant uh, category here and look for something that might give my leaves a bit more texture. And we have a leaf, we could do a leaf, but I think I'm gonna choose this little um, wavy grass. It kind of looks like seaweed almost to me. And um, we can then create, a, we can stamp or create a new fill pattern right on top of our existing fill pattern. Now we can do this singly, or we can do it as a all over fill. We can do it in a line. Um, if I if my fill is too dense, I can actually remove my needle fill points, and that will um, prepare an area um, for doing stamps of embossed lines. I try. I usually try it both ways to see what I like best. So I'm going to try just my stamp fill, and it is thinking. It's giving me my little cogwheel. And now I have placed that stamp. It's gone vertically across my leaves. Now, hard to tell what it looks like till I zoom out. Um, let me come back to zoom to fit so I can see if I like that or not. It's a different look. I'm not sure I, I like it. So, you know, we have undo. That's the most wonderful thing about it is that we have undo. And perhaps I would prefer to rotate that stamp a different direction, or I can rotate it. Um, let's try rotating it about 60 degrees. Let's see what that does for us. Put it on an angle, and then I will refill that stamp. And I might like it a little bit better. Now, to me, that's more pleasing. I'm not sure if it is to you or not. So, um, but that is just a real quick and easy way to add a little bit of texture to an otherwise plain fill pattern. And that's can be done with any of the built-in stamps. There is also um, a text stamp. So if you wanted to like stamp initials or a name in the design, you could do that as well. Okay, now to get back into my embroidery screen where I was, I simply close, I know it's really hard to do this, but you just close the stitch editor window 
and you'll be back in your embroidery window and you can see the effects of your embossing right there. Okay. So that um, is a pretty nifty way to add a little bit of uh, more character to your embroidery designs. Let's see here. Um, so a uh, question, I have Premiere Plus software that has modify, you just showed, can I just add Stitch Editor to it? So Premiere Plus, if you have original Premiere Plus, I do believe it was actually called modify at that point in time. If you have the ultra version, you have all the tools I'm showing you today. Um, Premiere Plus Ultra, Premiere Plus 2 Ultra are equivalent um, as far as Stitch Editor goes to my Sonet Platinum level. I know, so many names, so many terms. Um, and what are the little T for? Oh, gosh. I assume that was an embossing. Was that maybe in texting, uh, the text? Sorry, I'll try to go back and answer that question. But I have a, I only have a few minutes left, and I do want to show you a couple other things in our um, platinum level of our software for Stitch Editor. So I have, let me delete my daffodils here. I have two hearts here and these hearts are from our super design category. This heart is green and this heart is white. And remember what I said when you have a green boxes, you can't actually edit the design other than changing the size um, because it's not fixed as stitches. So to fix something as stitches, you do a right click and choose fix as stitches. And then it will um, change to white boxes. All right, so with white boxes, let's go back into Stitch Editor and I'll go back to that embossing and see if we can figure out what the little T is for. Let's go to emboss. Meredith or Amy, if either of you have any more information for me, that would be fabulous. Um, let me, I'm going to create a text stamp called love. So you create the text and you even choose the type of font style you want and say, okay. And so I created that and then I'm going to load that file. Oh, I don't know where my file loaded to though. Here it is. And I'm going to do a single stamp attach it once and it seems just like a, a rubber stamp and I can stamp it as many times as I want to fill, right click and turn it off. So I can do that. Um, looking to see, oh, the, oh, the T's meaning the trim commands in the design. So that would have been when we were looking at the design in modify probably. So, right, there are some circular um, little dots. Um, there's S for um, a stop command, a T for a trim command, and a C for cut commands. So that's that's what those are. Thank you, Meredith and Amy, for clearing up um, for clearing up that question for me. I appreciate it very much. Okay, so this was um, just doing a stamp embossing. Again, I was over here on emboss and created a little stamp with it. So you can really personalize your embroidery designs. Okay, uh, let's head back over to our embroidery side and you can see the design came in with our stamp already attached. And I think I have time to show one more cool little trick. There's so many cool things you can do in the um, Stitch Editor. I have um, just this word home that I created using this Marlowe um, font. And I've already saved this as, um, fixed it as stitches rather. I'm going to take this into Stitch Editor. Again, I can go to Edit Design or right click and bring it into Stitch Editor. But a lot of people want to make um, 
an applique or a curved border. They want something other than like a frame or a border around. They want the border to shape around the design. So I thought I would illustrate this um, using a word. And again, I'm in Stitch Editor and I'm going to choose the border tool that is within Stitch Editor, okay? And there is a border tool available for you in just the software, but the border tool in Stitch Editor is different. And I want to add an applique. So I'm going to turn on the add applique, and then I'm going to pick a fabric. I'm just going to pick something from my quick swatches right here. I kind of like this lavender color and choose OK. And then I'm going to choose border embroidery, and that finds the shape around my embroidery design. Now I can change the margin. I can increase or decrease that margin as I wish. I kind of like the 10 millimeters. Maybe I'll make it just, uh, uh, I think I'll leave it at 10. I think 10 will work for us. I can choose what the stitching of that border will be. The default is a satin stitch, but you also have the running stitch, motif stitches, and triple stitches. And I can go into options and choose um, what stitch width and density I want. In this case, it brings up the properties for satin line because I chose satin. So I'm just going to cancel out. I'm going to leave everything as is. And I want to create that border externally around my design, but I do have three different choices. I can create an overlay border, an internal border, or the external. And by simply clicking on that external border and leaving Stitch Editor and coming back into embroidery, you can see I have my original home and then I have the home I created that has an applique and a border stitch. So when you use that applique border combination, it will put everything in the right sequence. In fact, if we hover over this color, we should be able to see that it's just an outline. Let me take this back into Stitch Editor and show you that, what it looks like, because it's just easier to show you there. It will do the, um, it will do the outline for um, your placement and your tack down. So I'm showing you just color one here. And then the next color is the word home. And there's those little green T's, those are tie offs. And then our next and last color is our satin stitch. So it places everything in the right order. You don't have to worry about it at all. Okay. Well, it looks as if I have um, run out of time. And there are so many more things I could show you in the Stitch Editor. Um, needless to say, the Stitch Editor within the Platinum Level of Software is far more powerful than the, Stitch, uh, than the Modify tab within the Gold Level. So if you really want every tool in your toolbox um, to be creative with your embroidery designs, go ahead and, um, and get the Platinum Level software. Or you can upgrade if you currently have the Gold Level of software. Go visit your local store or dealer and you'll be able to um, go ahead and upgrade that Gold into Platinum. And of course, you can upgrade Silver to Platinum as well. So you have all the fun tools in your toolbox. All right. Well, thank you. Um, if there's any other questions that come in, I'll be checking back over the next several days to look um, for um, additional comments that, that require answers and we'll get back to you. So thanks so much, everyone, and have a wonderful afternoon. Let's see. Oh, you know what, Meredith? I don't see when our next lives are. Um, I know that we have a live coming up. I believe we have one. Let's see. Here we go. Um, our next My Sonet Facebook Live is May the 10th. That's a Wednesday at 2 p.m. Central with Mickey Hudson. 
And she's going to be teaching you about the background wizard and assistant. So that's a fabulous tool. And then um, I don't see our next, um, our other lives, but check back on all of our social media pages um, for all of our next lives for our other brands. So have a great afternoon, everyone. And we'll see you next month with Mickey Hudson. Bye.